All right, next up we've got Rodney, welcome. Hi. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, my name is Rodney and I'm a recent graduate from the University of Bolton in the UK. So uh, today I'm gonna to be going through my procedural course crystal uh, generator and I'll be covering the different sections within the tool and some of the workflows that I used to generate the different aspects of the tool and how the tool can be used by artists to quickly generate a wide range of uh, quartz crystals. Excellent, looking forward to it, let's get started. All right, thank you. Hi everyone. So I'm gonna be going through my procedural quartz crystal generator and I'll be covering the different sections involved in creating this tool. So the first section that I'll be covering will be the external geometry. Then after that, I'll be covering the internal geometry and how that was generated, as you can see in this animation. So for the external geometry, to create this, I decided to start with a cylinder and then I selected the top and bottom points. And then I applied an AA noise to add some displacement to those points. The rest of these nodes are just there to make sure that the displacement is only applied in the Y axis. I also made sure to promote the offset value for the AA noise so that more variation could be added to the displacement later on. After I was satisfied with that displacement, I then used a shrink wrap node to create a convex hole of that mesh. This uh, resulted in the angular faces being generated on top of the, uh, of the mesh as well as the bottom. This created the desirable effect that I was looking for. Here you can see me adjusting the offset for the AA noise, which is creating a wide range of varying shapes. So the next thing to tackle was the bevel on the geometry. To do this, I decided to add an attribute randomize, which randomized the P scale. This meant that the poly bevel node would then use that P scale to drive the width of the bevel. I also made sure to promote the offset value so that it can be used to adjust the intensity of that bevel. As you can see down here, you can use that to adjust how much you add the bevel. So the next aspect to tackle was the chip damage on the edges of the crystal. To do this, I decided to create a new tube and I made sure that this tube did not have any horizontal rolls. This was so that when we do a Boolean intersect, we could create a new crystal mesh without any horizontal lines. This is important as it allows us to only extract the vertical long lines so that uh, we can scatter points onto them. And this allows us to then uh, scatter spheres onto it, which can then be used later on to Boolean. Uh, these two attribute randomized nodes are used to randomize the orientation and the P scale of the points. And then that will be transferred to the spheres later on. So when we're Boolean, we can get, um, we can get this desired uh, effect where only on these long sharp edges, we get the chipping going on. Now I'm going to be going through how I did the surface displacement that you can see on this third crystal. So to do this, I decided to convert the low poly geometry into a VDB, where I then applied a noise to just add some displacement to the surface. As you can see here, I just used a simple AA noise and I um, promoted multiple attributes so that we can add variation later on. After that, I then converted the VDB back to, uh, to polygons so that they can be rendered and shaded. This is the SDF before it's been converted to poly. As you can see, there's a lot of detail here. These remaining nodes are just here to clean up the mesh and optimize it by removing any unwanted attributes. And that is it for the external geometry. So now I'm going to be covering the internal geometry. I'll start by covering how I created the internal fibers that you can see within the crystal. So this was done by importing the crystal geometry and then scattering points within its volume. And then by using an add node, I can connect every second point together to form these lines. I can then use the, uh, the convert line node to generate a rest length attribute. And this attribute can then be used 
uh, within the attribute triangular uh, to, to group certain lines that go above a certain length. And then with this slider, I can delete uh, lines that are above uh, a certain threshold. And this just provides extra control. And uh, after that, the, uh, the lines were then converted to a polywire so that they can be rendered. The next section is to generate the small air pockets that you can see here within the crystals. So it followed a similar process where you scatter points within the, uh, the crystal geometry. And then you copy spheres that are slightly displaced to just add some variance. And I also uh, randomized the P scale and orientation to make sure that it looks extra unique. And then this just allows for this, this geometry to, to be, you can add a different shader to that geometry to add more variation when rendering. So this last section will be the most complex one, which will cover how I approach the internal fracturing within the tool. This method was first demonstrated by Moritz Schwind from Entagma and utilizes VDBs for generating the complex shapes within the crystal. I decided to go with this method because of how elegant it was at creating this highly complex detail that was very suitable for my needs. So my approach to this was to import the crystal geometry and then using the bound node to create a bounding box of that geometry and then converting that to VDBs. And after that, I then applied uh, a noise to the VDB as, a, as well as also um, promote the offset so that later on that, that, that noise can be uh, moved about to add more variations to that to those cracks. After I was satisfied with the um, with the uh, VDB noise, I then converted that to um, to a polygon so that it can actually be rendered. And then um, before that, before uh, finishing everything off, I then um, booleaned that uh, that uh, converted VDB so that I only had the the pieces that, that are lined with the interior of the quartz crystal. Now this bottom section, uh, I also included a poly reduce node. And the purpose of this node was to allow for control on how much poly count you'd have. And this is an optimization feature because sometimes you'd have the crystal far away that you might not need a very detailed um, uh, resolution of the internal fracturing and uh, that is it for the internal geometry so now i'm just going to have a brief coverage of the actual tool and the different settings that are exposed throughout uh, this project so i'm only going to cover the key controls um, within this tool so for the external geometry uh, there is a control for the global seed for those scattered chips on the corners of the uh, crystal as well as the uh, the scale for those chips if you want to adjust that you can and another control is the breakup switch so you can just enable or disable those chips if you don't want them and another important one is the wireframe this lets you work on multiple layers as it allows you to see the inner workings of the crystal so you can adjust the other layers now moving on to the fibrous internal crystals uh, you've got a display control as well as the total count. This lets you control the amount uh, within the crystal as well as a global C to add variation and a wire radius to, uh, to change the, the radius of the, um, of the lines. Now the last one, not the last one, the second from last uh, is the internal cracks. You also have a display to hide it or not hide it and a wireframe as well as a poly count which lets you optimize it by reducing the count and for the last one is the empty areas. You also have a display, a, warf a wireframe, as well as a total count to control the amount of air pockets, a seed value so that you can add variation to your crystals, as well as a uniform scale to adjust. Thank the you very much for the, watching. The and I hope you've enjoyed inside. this breakdown. Uh, I hope that some of the procedural workflows that I've shown in this process will be helpful to you in the future. Thank you.